Hi, I'm Danielle with Stitch and Designs. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are doing a Marathon Society video and we are doing the Fundamental Tote from Creations by Joe Lely. This is such a fun and quick bag to make. Like, besides the fact that I can be a little long-winded when it comes to my explanations of stuff and I had to make sure to shrink my video down to under an hour because before it was way longer but so I apologize I had to cut a bunch of all my like the parts of me sewing out so and other randomness so sorry about that <laughs> but this is going to be such a fun make I hope you guys enjoy the video I do do one slight modification and I do a magnetic closure for mine which is a, a different than what the pattern is and then I also do a birth version of this. I believe the pattern just mainly goes over the drop-in lining, but I do a birth one for that. So a little bit about my bag and material. So the vinyl is just stuff that was at Joey Hens in the clearance section in the vinyl because mine has some of it and sometimes I get lucky. My lining, I used canvas. It is Princess Bride. <laughs> I love it and it's got all the quotes the characters it is super cute and it is canvas from K&A's custom fabric and hardware this one is not out yet so I will come out here soon it is the next round to open aside from that everything else the my zipper pull and zipper tape I think I got from my handmade space my, same with the rest of my hardware and the rivets and the magnetic rivet, magnetic rivet. It's a rivet magnet. <laughs> I love these. These are amazing. So all of the, so the rivet parts are all from Cam Synapse, and I will put all of that information down in the link below or in the description below. So, and then we got a cute little hello. My name my name is Inigo Montoya. <laughs> so I got that fun little patch that is mine. I digitized that one. So. I think I, I don't know if I'm going to release it or not. We'll see if I get a bunch of comments on here saying, yes, we want it, then I will probably release it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video of the fundamental dope. Okay. So some things you're going to need, you'll need zipper tape for the inside pocket with the zipper pull. And then I have my zipper interior zipper pocket pieces, which I totally left one somewhere else. So you'll have two of these and I have mine interfaced. You have your handles. And then I have my slip pocket. Technically my slip pocket's not exactly following per the pattern because I had directional, I won and then plus I didn't have a tall enough piece of fabric to be able to account for the actual pattern piece. So I just have this one and I forgot to already cut the little accent piece for the top. So I'll go back and cut that. So you'll also need the little accent piece for the top of your slip pocket. I have my two exterior pieces and I use Decoville light on mine just because this vinyl is a little bit thinner. So I wanted to have a little bit of structure to it. And then my lining is a fun awesome princess bride fabric it's super cool i love all the quotes on this inconceivable <laughs> so those are just that is canvas so that's what that one is and oh here we go i have my little overlay for my zipper interior zipper pocket and then this is one thing that i did slightly different than per the pattern because i'm going to be doing the hidden strap connectors i did mine at two inches wide. I can't remember exactly what the pattern tells you to do, but mine are a little bit wider because I wanted, I knew I wanted to use one inch hardware because these are the four inch wide pieces to be able to, so that would use one inch and then these were a little bit smaller. So to make sure to accommodate for one inch hardware. Oh yeah, speaking of hardware. So you'll also need to have rivets and I'm gonna be using silver. Or I could use gunmetal on the outside because but my inside is different. So I'm just going to be using rectangles. Make life a little bit easier. So yeah, silver will look nice with that. Yeah, I think so. So I have four of those. One for each side. And then you'll need 
four rivets. So those for, if you're doing the hidden strap connectors, that will go on the outside and then, yep, that. And then I did add um, some small pieces of Decoville light onto the back of my hidden strap connector pieces, just for some added strength. All right, I'm gonna go finish cutting the slip pocket piece and we'll get going. So I'm gonna personally start with something that's a little extra. So I did, I made this cute little applique piece. So I know this part goes underneath and then like this edge goes here. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't get it off to the side, but I wanna have it kind of like a fun area, so. We'll go kind of like right there. I don't want it to be perfectly straight, just kind of like a kind of like a slapped on the side of the bag. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and sew that on. Okay, we're gonna fold to get these guys all sewn up and as well as our handles. So I already have the middles marked on these guys, and I still I need to still mark the middles of these. If you wanted to put a piece of double-sided stick tape down the middle and then fold the sides over so that way when you meet it, it holds it. You totally can, but if not, no big deal. I just like, I'll just hold it and then you're just going to sew down one side, making sure that your edge meets the middle. And you're just gonna keep doing that to all of them, go down the one side and then go back up the other. Okay, now that you got all four of those done, we can set those to the side for the moment. The next thing you want to do is make sure to find the middle of your handles and then you're going to mark them and if you want to use double-sided stick tape you can I just tend to just make sure to clip everything so you're gonna go down one side put everything to the middle clip the edge once you finish the one side you can flip it over and you'll do the same thing going down the other other direction once both sides are clipped together, you're going to then match up and fo or fold over the middle. And so then you'll match up the edge here and you can start taking away at least half of the clips because you won't need all of them. And you'll just clip it together, taking out the, one, the clips that you don't need. So that complete, that's how you would fold and clip in preparations for your handle or your strap, yeah, handle, handle, no, shoulder strap, straps, handles, I don't know, either way, yeah, I think it's a strap, because straps go around the shoulders, handles, you just hold on to with your hand, yes, we'll, we'll go with that, so, gonna do the same thing to our other one, once you have both of your straps clipped together, or if you use double-sided stick tape stuck together, Either way, once you have your straps and ready to go, you're gonna sew down both sides at an eighth of an inch. Okay, we're gonna grab our exteriors. We're going to find our center. So lining up one side Make a little notch at the top and the bottom. And you're gonna do this to both of your exterior pieces. Okay, now that we're on the back, we're gonna make some marks. And I'm not entirely positive that I, I think I do this per the instructions. I'm not entirely positive. I kinda sometimes wing it. But I'm going to go down two inches and over three. One, two, three. Make a little, making a mark. So I'm making like a T. So there's, there's that one. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So again, we're going down two inches over three. One, two, three. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing for the other one. Okay, if you have one of these really cool little hidden strap connectors from Jolili, Creations by Jolili, 
these things are a lifesaver. So what we're gonna do is, cause I'm gonna be using one inch hardware, I'm using the one inch piece. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. So I'm laying that down on our marks. So the top of this right here, the little flat parts is what's gonna line up with my mark. And then the line that goes like, I guess horizontal. Yeah, because this would be vertical for me right now. And this is this little dark one inch line is horizontal. So I'm lining that up with my little other mark. And then I'm going to mark around the little top thingy. I really don't know what else to call that other than a thingy. I'm going to do that to all of them. And so we want to keep this nearby because we're going to be using it again after we've got those all cut out. Okay, you're gonna grab, I just, cause I'm gonna stay here. So I have my little cutting mat and then and the little X-Acto knife, which is very helpful. So what you're gonna do is cut on top of the little pin mark that we made. So we're not gonna cut the horizontal one, the long, the longer one. We're just gonna cut the, the mark that we made from the thingy. So we're gonna cut the thingy line. So we're gonna do that. So take your time cutting that, you wanna make nice even cuts and then double check that you cut all the way through which of course my corners i'm never really good at getting the corners right mm, get you. okay come on all right, so we got one, and so then you're gonna do cut like this. So this is what's been cut. That's it. So that's all you want to cut. And so you're gonna do the same that same thing to the rest of them. Okay, so we're gonna grab our little hidden deep or our strap connectors. So I'm doing them hidden. So we're going to slide it in from the front with the back side facing us. So we're gonna push that in. And so checking, so I have a little, a little more than half of it is sticking up onto the front. So we're going to flip that over. So this is what we got on the other side. And we wanna make sure that it is looking even. We've got a little bit more sticking up there. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to stitch right here on the top of this, right across. And we, do, we don't wanna go past the tabs on either side because then it's going to be visible from the front. So we're just going to sew right along in here and we're in a back stitch, but no excessive back stitching because you don't want to accidentally perforate through your vinyl. All right, so this is what our back looks like. So we have that little bit, that stitching right here, making sure that it's not visible on the front. And I got super close on that one, but not visible, so that's a good thing. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle. If you wanna use a rectangle, D-ring, whatever you wanna use, it's all good. And then we're gonna take the excess from here and we're going to slide that back down inside. Sometimes it's easier if you grab, put in one little corner of it and then reach in for, and then grab it. And then you can pull it through. And you wanna like, cause if you over snug it up, then you can see the stitching on the top kind of. So you want it to be snug, but you don't want it to be overly snuggy. So that looks pretty good. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab these guys from the backside. I'm going to flip the exterior over, and then I'm gonna sew through this little, our little thingy that we had, so this little flap. So I'm gonna sew through that and our two little, the two ends of our tab pieces. So we're gonna sew through all of that. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, so that's what that's gonna look like. I, it's, I love the hidden strap connectors. They just look so good. And so don't worry, this, and then when I said at the beginning that we were gonna need some rivets, we will punch rivet through here and that will be an extra security to help hold that in place because that by itself, I I personally don't wouldn't wanna leave it just like that. I would wanna make sure to have a rivet for me personally. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my other three and they're gonna be done the exact same way. After you got all of your hidden strap connectors sewn in place, we're gonna grab our cool little hidden strap connector, little 
thingy template. There we go. <laughs> and so these are the different measurements, right, that are along. So each three of the sides have a thingy that sticks out. This side, the one side with like the hole. This is our rivet placement. So our one inch line will line up with all the marks that are on the outside. So we're gonna line that up and then this edge right here is gonna go right at where the fold of the fabric is. So we're gonna get that all nice and lined up and then grab a marking pin and we're gonna mark the center. I was like, that really didn't mark, there we go. And you're going to do this to all four of them. Once you have all four of your pieces marked, you're gonna grab a hole punch and then you're gonna go right over your mark and punch your holes. So this is what they'll look like. You got your little, you got the holes punched and then you'll go ahead and then add your rivets to them. And then, like, cause I, I use the cam snap press so I'll add my rivets and then take them to my press and then give them a nice little squeeze and they'll be all nice and pretty. So I'm going to go, go add my rivets real quick, real quick. There we go. <laughs> this is what they look like once you add the rivets. Oh, <laughs> clearly doesn't want to stay up. So, nice and pretty. So I'm going to wait to add the straps with the strap ends once the bag is completely done because then I just one less thing to get into my way. So currently... You know what, let's actually just, let's just finish sewing our exterior since we're right here. So we're going to line up our bottom. So we got our center notches lined up. We're gonna clip those together. Make sure to go all the way to the ends. Get some clips on. And if you hear growling and grumbling, that would be the puppies playing. And we're going to sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, after you do your 3 8 inch seam allowance there, we're going to then take our bot this bottom seam and we're going to butterfly it open. So uh, whatever is easiest for you to butterfly the seam, if it's like just pressing it down on the top and then just kind of running a finger underneath, just make sure that it is open or you can lay it where the wrong side is up and then you can just do a little finger press or like if you have one of those like seam rollers, you can roll the seam. So I'm just finger pressing it from the right side of the fabric and hopes that will work. Once you got it all, your seam all pressed, we are going to top stitch. So I'm gonna do it from the top right side of the fabric and we're just gonna do an eighth of an inch away from our middle seam. After you get your bottom seam all top stitched, what we're going to do is then fold our sides together. We're going to line these guys up, add some clips. And what we do to one side on, on or what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other side. Okay. And then we're going to sew down each side at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All right, so for our sides and to do our boxed corners, huh. I caught that little bit right there. So I'm gonna just trim that. Let's see if I can do this one. Okay, so I got a little tiny little piece of fabric stuck right there, but it's okay. All right, so we're gonna do this to our corners to get our boxedness in. We're going to butterfly our side seams as well. And we are going to make sure that that lays flat back a little ways and we're going to make sure those seams are lined up right on top of each other that's going to help our corners our boxing look really nicely and then again to just add some clips on the sides just to kind of help hold the material in place and we're going to sew our corner at a 3 8 inch seam allowance making sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end and then we're going to trim this seam allowance down. And technically we're supposed to trim these seam allowances down too. So I'm just going to do a little snip, snip there. And if you're doing a drop in lining, you're supposed to have a one inch mark down from the top and you're not supposed to trim that. But I am not doing a drop in lining. 
So I am going all the way up. All right, so what we did to this one side, we're gonna do the exact same thing to this side. Well, our bag is starting to take shape. At least the exterior part is anyway. <laughs> All right, so we can set this lovely beauty aside and we can start playing with our the inside. So let's go ahead and find our centers. If I can get my fabric to want to cooperate with me. There we go. All right, so on one side, I'm going to add, which side do I want to use? Because, yeah, I'll use this one. Not that it really matters that much, but little differences. All right, so I got my, so we're gonna do the zipper. Yes, because I am gonna have to switch colors because I decided to use red for my slip pocket topper, a little slip pocket accent thingy. All right, so we, well, I'm gonna get some double-sided stick tape and then we can figure out where the heck we're gonna put the slip or zipper pocket. One side. Stay. All right, so we got that taped down and our zipper pocket is going to go two inches down. So I'm gonna leave my ruler sitting right along the two inch mark and going down. I'm gonna make a small, tiny little crease in here so I know where the heck my middle is of that. So I can try to line everything up. And then I'm gonna lay the one side down, lining everything up, keeping everything there. Looks good. All right, okay, well now that I got the one side taped down, I can go ahead and take the paper off of the other side. Holy smoothies, my cutting was not straight at all. That is, that is some crooked. <laughs> wow, that is crooked. Let's see if I can straighten that out because wowzes. Okay. Now that I got the inside trimmed up and looking a little bit better. Still not the most fantabulous cutting in the entire world, but it'll be okay. Okay, that looks a little better now. All right, so we're gonna sew around on the outside of our little zipper overlay. And again, the zipper overlay is an optional zipper thing. You do not have to do it, but I, it, it makes it look really nice. Now that the outside of the zipper overlay is sewn down, we can cut out our middle. And you wanna be careful that you don't accidentally cut your material from the front. So I'm just gonna kinda of sneak it up. And then trim the excess out of the way. All right, so this is what our front with the overlay and the fabric cut out will look like. I'm gonna go ahead and add my little personal label. I, per I like to add my business label to the inside of the bags, but if you like to add them to the outside before, before sewing up the exterior, you would have wanted to make sure to add your label on the outside. Once you have your labels on them, if you do have your label put on the inside, if not, once you have this part done, you can go ahead and set that aside. Okay, you're gonna grab your two slip pocket pieces, your zipper tape and your zipper pull. I chose to do some hearts because we got two love. <laughs> made, made me chuckle. So to figure out the length of your, besides it's probably in the instructions, but I do not have them right in front of me. So I'm just gonna do my zipper tape, the length of what the pocket is. So that looks pretty good. There you go. And then I'll make sure to heat seal the ends of my zipper tape. Okay, 
we are going to sew these slip or zipper pocket. We're going to put the zipper teeth right on top of our fabric. So we're looking at the right side of both our fabric and our zipper tape. Yes, let me... <laughs> I always, I always manage to mess this stuff up for some reason. Yes. <laughs> I had to double check that. And we're going to sew that at an eighth of an inch. And then we're going to grab our other piece and we're going to lay our zipper tape right side together on that side as well. Making sure that we're now lining up the edge of our slip zipper pocket. I can speak today. And then we're going to line up the edges of our pocket piece here and our zipper tape. When we flip it over, we just wanna make sure that our sides are also lined up and those look good. And then we're gonna sew that at an eighth of an inch. Now that we got our zipper pocket done, so this is what it should look like. So when you have your zipper right side up, you should have the wrong sides of your zipper fabric facing up. We're going to add our zipper pull. So. I should have said, before you pull them apart, you wanna make sure to check your, what your zipper teeth look like, because when you add the zipper pull, when, when, however they look on the, as they looked before, if they look the same when, after you add your pull, you will have a beautiful zipper pull every time. So just one side in, just a little bit at a time, and then you'll work looking through the back of your zipper. You'll work your zipper teeth together. There we go. And there we go. Beautiful zipper. All right. And then to make life a little bit easier, we're going to add some double-sided stick tape along the zipper tape itself. So I'm just going to put it right along the edge out of the area where we're going to be sewing. Okay. I'm going to have my zipper, when it's closed, it's going to be on my left, so then I open it to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the top tape paper if I can. Not the sticky stuff, leave the sticky stuff. All right, so I got that one side. Then we're gonna grab our zipper pocket or the the lining. There we go. I'm like we're already working on that. And we're going to lay that right on top. We can double checking our your spacing in between, so the top and the bottom. Looks like I have a little more. You know, I am going to take the tape off, the paper off the bottom one too. I might regret that, but we're gonna try this. Okay. All right, centering the pocket piece. We're going to line it up to where we have the zipper teeth centered in between like the opening of our overlay. Pull the zipper pull out of the way. Okay, that looks better. Okay, much better the second time around. And maybe a little adjusting. Okay, this stuff doesn't like to want to lay flat. There we go. Okay, now we're looking good. All right, now we're going to sew on the inside of the overlay. And we're going to sew down everything on the inside, all the way around. And we're going to do that at an eighth of an inch. Make sure to pull your zipper pull out of the way when needed. And then double check that your your slip po or your pocket pieces are laying flat and going in opposite directions like this. You do not want to accidentally sew through your pocket pieces. After you get that tied off, we're gonna then fold our one piece down on top, and then we can add a clip to each side because we're going to trim off the this little long piece right here, so that way they're the same length. Make sure that you are not cutting through your lining fabric, just through that one piece of your zipper pocket. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold. This will help us so after we turn it, the pocket out and we're going to then finish sewing the pocket when we 
turn the bag right side out because I'm going to be birthing the bag rather than doing a drop in. So I'm going to be pulling it through the pocket. I'm going to put that clip there so that will hold that piece there. Fold the other side. If you are doing a drop in lining, you do not need to fold the pockets. You'll sew all three sides of your pocket closed. And then we're just going to sew down the one side at a quarter inch and then we'll sew down the other side at a quarter inch. All right, so here is our zipper pocket looking marvelous. Okay, so for now we can go ahead and set the side with our zipper pocket over here. And we're going to start working on our slip pocket. So again, my slip pocket, I didn't have enough material to use the pattern piece to make it as exactly as it was. So I am going to have to sew across the bottom. So to be able to make it to where it's, it's, if you're using directional fabric, all I did for the pocket piece is I folded it in half and then I cut two at the half rather than one at the full. And then I'm just going to sew this together. I think it's a quarter inch. Do not quote me on that. I do not know for sure what the seam allowance is, but we're gonna, I'll go with a quarter inch. <laughs> so for myself, because I sewed down here, or I had to sew across the bottom, I'm gonna trim the corners. If you were using a full pattern piece where you just had to fold it in half, all you would be doing is sewing down the two sides per the seam allowance. I honestly am not sure if it was a quarter inch or it could have been three eighths, I'm not sure. Then we're gonna turn the pocket right side out. If you have a pokey turny tool, you're gonna, well, for me, well, even for you, if you use the pattern, you're gonna poke out your corner, bottom corners, make them look nice and pretty. And then if you wanted to, you could take it over to your iron and give it a nice little press. I'm gonna be lazy and just finger press everything. So I'm going to do this side up and then I'm actually going to do a little like a one eighth inch and I'm just going to base this this top piece together because that's where my little accent piece is going to go. So it's just going to help hold the fabric in place. A tape. So then, yeah, yeah, I'm going to use some double sided stick tape. That'll probably make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to add some on the front. Flip it over and we'll add some to the back. Oop, that went a little long. Okay, I'm going to take the paper off. Oop, try to take just the paper. So let's try again. Paper. Sticky stuff, you stay there. Okay. So this is my front. So, yeah. Okay, let's see if I can fold this in half. Well, anyway, I'm gonna probably just put a little bit on the front and then whatever I, the excess from the back, I can always trim off once I get it sewn down. And yes, it is longer and I can, and I'll trim off those once we're done. Okay, that looks nice. Oh, come on, paper. Come on, there we go. And then we're gonna fold over the material to the back side. Ooh, lots of extra material, which is fine. And my tape is not sticking at all. Okay, well that didn't work. So let's just do some clips. Normally I would try to put, I'm like, eh, do I wanna to try to split it? Yeah. I don't like that. 
Uh, okay, we're, I'm going to try to split this, see if I can, anyway. Because I didn't like how much. All right, so I am just going to sew down an eighth. I'm just going to sew right along the ed this bottom edge. I think in the instructions it says to do like an eighth inch top stitch and then to do this one. I'm just going to do the one down below. So... And I'm going to be lazy instead of doing red. I'm going to do black. I'm going to be bold and do an accent color. Hopefully I don't mess it up. All right. Well, that looks... <laughs> it's, yeah, if I hold it up like this, that is... Yeah, it goes a little burp in the middle. Like, I probably... Oh, yeah. I don't think I pushed it down far enough. But I'm not going to change it because I've, yeah, I'm, I probably won't be able to get it to look that good again. <laughs> well, the stitching, not the fact that I didn't have it all the way down. So hopefully it won't be super noticeable being in the pocket. So yeah, it happens. It's, it still looks good. All right, what are we doing? And we're going to put the slip pocket, we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the zipper pocket. We're gonna put it two inches down from the top. We're gonna to find the center. So all I did to find the center was I just kind of pinched it here. I'm gonna lay that right there. Okay, we're gonna slide this over. And we're going to sew around the three sides. So we're going to go down this side, across the bottom, and back up. Okay, now that that's sewn on, I think another thing I might do to be able to help kind of like hold the edges of this pocket in, I'm going to add some rivets on the ends. And then I'll also kind of hide my ugly stitching right there because that is not fantastic. All right, so in her pattern pattern she talks I don't know I can't remember if it's in the pattern or in one of her videos it talks about a pin pocket so I think I'm gonna add Ooh, my pocket's kind of deep for a pin pocket but will a normal pin fit Ooh. and if it sits right there eh, you know what I'm I think I'm gonna skip the pin pocket so I'm just gonna go in the middle There we go. So lining up my top and bottom notches, I'm going to make a mark. And then I'm gonna sew right on top of it. Oh, right through Inigo's face. Yay, Inigo. Yep, so on our my slip pocket, I am going to add a rivet right in the middle and on my two sides. So I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes and add my rivets. Got my rivets on for my slip pockets. Look really nice. Yeah, and it does cover up my not so pretty stitching. Okay, so something that I also do differently than the pattern is I add a magnet closure for this one. So I put my magnet an inch and a quarter down. Put my mark. So I can get, oh, that mark will have to work, so that's all I got. <laughs> and then the other center, so we got an inch and a quarter. Going back to the rivets on the slip pocket, I also added add pieces of Decoville Heavy to the back of those rivets just to be able to help reinforce on the canvas. And I'm going to do the same thing for when I add my magnet pieces. So and my magnet pieces are rivet magnets and those are also from Camp Snap, same place as the rivets. I love those magnets. They make it so much easier than having to do the lines and the cut and then uh, yeah, <laughs> so I'm gonna go take care of that real quick and I'll be right back. Right, so here's our, these are my magnet rivets and they're just like that with the Decoville Heavy on the back of them. Super easy to install. Okay, so now we're going to line up the bottom 
and whoop. and we're going to line up our notches we're going to just clip them along and there we go and we're going to sew this at a half inch seam allowance and then just like we did with the exterior piece, we're going to take our lining, we're going to butterfly the seam, so we're gonna split it open. And we're going to top stitch on both sides. So make sure it is split open. You know what, you're being difficult. Let's go this way. Should I just lay this down and then we're going to finger press our seam open and then give it a nice little press if you depending on your material you can take it over to your iron and actually press it if you wanted to and then once you got it all open laid open you're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch down both sides after you have your bottom stitched and our top stitch you're going to make a little one inch mark on our sides, do that side, and I'll do this one over here. Those will come into play in a second. All right, we're going to line up our edges here, and then clip them together. Okay, so we're going to now sew down our sides we're going to start at a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then when we get to that mark or even right before that mark we're going to start transitioning to a half inch seam allowance and then we're going to continue to finish the rest of it at a half inch so again we're starting at 3 8 then we get about that mark and then we're going to transition outward to a half inch and then flip it over and you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Again, if you're gonna be doing the drop-in lining, you're not gonna trim down the little one inch things above, you'll trim this one down, but I will trim it after I sew down my little boxy bottom corners. So again, our side seams, we're going to butterfly that open. We're going to line, make sure that our seam is lined up. There we go, so we got a clip there. there. And there. Okay, and then we're going to sew that at a half inch seam allowance. Okay. And we're gonna repeat that same thing to the other side. Okay. And then we're gonna trim off the excess of our sides. So I'm just gonna make the little snips down here. And then don't forget to trim the boxy corners down here. All right, we're pretty much almost to the end. We are almost there. So make sure before we add in our lining, we open up this zipper pocket. So whatever side you want to go up, like to be on that same side as your front, that's the side that you're gonna put up against it. So you're gonna put those. So my front and my zipper pocket are gonna go right sides together. So that way when the bag gets turned out, when I look at my front on the inside, the back side of my front will be my zipper pocket. So I'm gonna line up my top notches. So my lining and my exterior should be right sides together, regardless of it's if it's ex linings on the outside or exteriors on the outside, it doesn't matter. They should be right sides together. And then your end seams right here. I guess this is probably why she says not to trim the top inch because yeah, even when you are going to birth it, it would make this part a little bit easier if you're going to butterfly them. And then again, line up the middle notch on the other side and I'm gonna add clips on the end going throughout the middle. I'm just getting my edges done. So this is what I mean by nesting. So one seam goes one way and the other seam goes the other direction. But I'm gonna try to butterfly this if I can and if you butterfly you want to make sure that they're your seams open at the same spot come on baby okay 
Okay, there we go. And then I'm just gonna clip the rest of my pieces together, just adding a, a clip in between each of the pieces to kind of just hold it all there. Oh yeah, we still have to add the handles. So we're not quite all the way there. I still have handles. <laughs> I was getting excited. I was like, yeah, we're almost done. It's like, wait a second. I can do a quarter inch or a three eighths. I think I'm gonna do, I don't know what, like, I think, I think the pattern only ever says to do drop in. So let's do quarter inch. Quarter inch sounds good. Let's do that. All right, so we're gonna sew around this whole thing at a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure our lining and our exterior stay lined up. Okay, well now that we got that stitching done, now we can reach inside through our slip pocket and we're going to turn our bag right side out. That wasn't too bad. I am definitely gonna have to take an iron and press my exterior. If your exterior material, so like if your vinyl is a little, is thicker instead of like, cause my stuff is really soft and a little on, little, it's not super thin, but it's softer. If your material is thicker, then you definitely, you probably don't even need to add the Deckelville light. I'm wondering if you could do like, you could probably get away with either having nothing or maybe foam. Foam might be a nice alternative. So I think I'm gonna go press this now while the pocket's still open and it's a little bit easier to get in there. Yeah, because then I don't accidentally run over this because I have done that and that sucks. So I'm gonna go press this real quick. Okay, having pressed it, it looks a lot better. Like it could use some more. All I'm doing now is going around and I'm rolling my seams, getting them all lined up, getting ready for a top stitch. Ugly doogly. So we are clipped together. All right. So I'm, I like to start in a seam. So I'm going to start over here and then I am going to top stitch all the way around. Oh, this is where a cylinder arm would be really nice, but okay, okay. And then I'm a little, I'm weird when I do my top stitching. I do mine at a quarter inch because I've noticed that when I try to do it at an eighth inch, you get all that extra material because it's folded underneath and everything. It gets a little bulky and then it gets a little weird. So I just do it, I do a quarter inch and I found that it really helps for my top stitching to look nicer. But that's just, that might just be me. And then when you do go around for your top stitching, take your time. That is the most important thing you can do. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, definitely take your time. It is not a race. And make sure when you stop, take your foot off your pedal because you definitely do not want to accidentally start sewing when you didn't mean to. Okay, and then when you get back, you're gonna stop in the same spot that you started. We're gonna pull our ta tails long. And then you're gonna grab a big eyed needle. And we're going to, first we're gonna pull our threads from the outside to the inside. Okay. Once you have all your threads through, we're going to then in the seam line, or this, yeah, the seam allowance line or the top stitching line, I'm gonna go in and then go up in between my interior and exterior fabrics. And then I'm gonna thread my thread through the big eye. And then you're gonna pull your needle up and through, bringing the threads with it. And then you're going to tie off your threads and pull them tight so that way it sucks it down in between the 
in exterior and interior. And then give it a little trim. And then a little heat seal. Careful not to melt your vinyl. Okay, so there's that. And then we're gonna poke out our corners. Looks good. And then we're gonna grab our lining and we're gonna grab our slip pocket. We're going to tuck all of this in on itself. And then we're going to clip that. And then once you have it all clipped, you're going to just going to sew it at an eighth of an inch. After you got your pocket sewn closed, we're going to go ahead and then tuck that back inside. Make sure to push out the corners. Okay, so there is our exterior. We're going to add the closing magnet. There we go. Looks absolutely beautiful. So pretty. And then when we look inside, our lining looks really nice. Super cute. I love this little patch. It's so cute. Okay, we're almost done. So if you did add the straps or yeah, the straps before, then technically you are done, but I will add those now. And I think I'm going to actually add the what words. What am I looking for? I think I'm going to add strap -ins. There we go. I had totally was space cadetted on what the word was called. Okay. So we got... We need four strap ins. So one, two, three, four. All of those little tiny screws. So when you add these, we're going to do one set at a time. And then you'll find what side you like for your, your straps. And I'm going to go in through the rectangle. And then I'm going to come back up on itself. And then to close this off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just add a rivet through that. And so that's going to secure the handles, the straps in place. So I'll add a clip. Let me measure to see how much over the strap, the rectangle I have. So from the rectangle up to the end is one inch. Okay. And then make sure your strap doesn't have any twists and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go in and then fold up over itself and then double check. Let's see what kind of overhang we got. We got one inch. Add our clip. Flip to the other side. And I'll just do one side at a time. So whatever I do to this side, we'll be doing the exact same thing. So do I want to add the strap? Yeah, I'm going to add the strap ins first just because like... What if I put the rivet too high and then I don't have enough room? Yeah. So you want to make sure that when you are, when you have this closed and laid over itself, you don't want the rough end to be seen. You want the pretty shiny end to be seen. Oh, so pretty. I like it. So we got that. We got the shiny end. So I'm actually going to pull more of the strap through. And then I'm going to lay it on that. Okay, so we got that. And then we got that. And then we got our little screwdriver. Okay, so I like to use, it is called Loctite. I'm like, wow, brain fart. Okay, so I just need two screws, so push my pal away. So I'm going to add some Loctite onto the threads. The blue Loctite means that you can, rem that it is, it can come off. And then the red, if you use red, it means it's permanent. So you can't take it off. So, but the nice thing about it is that it helps to hold it in place. So as you're screwing it in, if it's not seated, if your screw is not seated in properly, one, it's going to cause, it can potentially cause your, your little screw to strip the threads, which would be bad because they're such tiny little screws. So make sure you go back and then sometimes you'll actually hear it kind of like set into place. 
And then if you're having a, like, as you're screwing it in, if you're having a really hard time screwing it in, it's probably because it's not seated in all the way. Okay. I think that's as far down as it goes. These screws are so tiny. But it's so, they're so pretty though. Okay, so there's one. Okay, so that side had the rough side up. Yep, so we're going to put the rough side up on this one. Looking marvelous. And then we got our Loctite, so let's grab two little screws. And then having a magnetic screwdriver is actually like a huge, big help when it comes to adding in these little tiny itty bitty little screws. If I can get it to get on there all the way. There we go. Make sure that's set evenly all the way on, on like I did on the slip pocket. There we go. And we just screw that in all the way. Sorry, my hand is like right in the way of the camera. I will try to do this lefty. So make sure that this is seated all the way up against your strap. And again, we're gonna go to the left a little bit. I don't know if you guys could hear that little snap. That was it setting down into place. And so now I'm gonna go righty tighty. That's as far down as I can go. Okay. So then we will, I will reline up the one inch overhang. My clip there. So everything that I did on this side, you're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side for the strap. And so when you go to add your rivet, because this is a one inch strap, you're gonna go halfway in between. So of course being half inch and then we, we have from here to the top is one inch. So that's what it, that's what we're looking like. So I'm gonna go, let's see what a half inch down. Oh, that's not quite, eh. let's go. I'm gonna put my rivet from the bottom of my strap end, I'm three eighths inch. So I'm gonna make a mark in the middle at a half inch and three eighths inch down. Let's check the look of that. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm gonna punch those holes. I'm gonna add my rivets. I'm gonna finish my other side and I'll come back and show you guys the finished bag. All right, guys, here she is. Looking beautiful. The strap ends. Just need to kind of wipe them off from my fingerprints. But they look so pretty. Oh my gosh, so pretty. I love it. <laughs> I love this. It's just such a fun, like totally little pop. Like, okay, so it's kind of, I call it like a mullet bag because it's got business on the outside, party on the inside. But it's like, if you want to be full business, you do this side. If you want to have a little bit of fun, you show this side. But then it's like when you open it up, bam! Oh, look at all the prettiness. I love this fabric. It's so cool. So we got one slip pocket, two slip pockets, and then our zipper pocket with our twelve. Awesome. Well, you guys, thank you for joining me on the sewing marathon tutorial of the fundamental tote from Creations by Jolili. Uh, such a very quick bag and there's so many ways to customize it if you wanted to like you could add an exterior slip pocket it's got nice big little areas to do embroidery add panels like you could definitely have a lot of fun with this bag and it's just like it's so simple but like very elegant it's kind of a sexy little bag yeah i would say that it's a little sexy bag <laughs> well again thank you guys for joining me and if you made it this far consider to like and subscribe